Estelle, Stelle for short, was sitting in the hotel parking lot checking her makeup in the mirror on the visor of her car. She wasn't behind the wheel of some expensive luxury sedan or exotic roadster. Every day she drove a 10-year-old Ford Escape SUV. After making sure her makeup and hair checked out, she started the car to head home. The clock on the dashboard showed it was just over 11 p.m., the drive home took about 15 minutes, so she must have gotten there before she told her husband, Derek, she was coming. On the way home, Stell fidgeted slightly in the leather seat of the SUV, thinking about the last four hours she had spent with her lover in the hotel room. Austin was six years younger, tall, broad-shouldered, and had the body of an athlete. A chance meeting at a Chamber of Commerce meeting eight months ago had led to a series of lunches and then dinners, culminating in a pleasant evening at a downtown hotel. These casual dates became regular evenings and sometimes a couple days when the opportunity presented itself. Pulling into the driveway, Stell saw the dim light from the television coming through the curtains on the window in the study. Derek was probably watching one of his shows on Netflix, waiting for her to come in. Getting out of the car, Stell took a deep breath to calm herself down. Derek probably expected her to share some information about where she and her co-workers were and what they were doing. The practice over the past few months had honed Stell's skills. Upon entering the house, Stell placed her purse on the hallway table and headed straight for the office. As she expected, Derek was there watching TV. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Where'd you go? Had dinner at Roscoe's and then to Club Bell for drinks. Who was there? Me, Erica, Teresa, and Julie. Derek turned off the TV and stood up, stretching. Let's go to bed. Today was a rough day. I had to fire Robert and Angie. Stell was shocked. What happened? Robert's wife got wind that he and Angie were doing loot things. A private investigator got onto them. She sued Robert, changed the locks, and threw him out of the house. Technically, Robert was Angie's boss, and it was in keeping with our no-friendship policy. It wasn't easy, but the job fell to me since I run this department. Damn it. That seems a little harsh if they weren't doing it on company time. It doesn't matter. It gives the whole thing a certain irrelevance. And my boss was adamant. His wife was cheating on him. Even though she was cheating, he was hurt in the divorce, and he is very embittered against cheaters of any kind. In the bedroom, Derek began to strip down to his underwear, his usual nighttime attire. Stell pulled a modest nightgown from her desk drawer and went into the bathroom to change. She carefully wrapped the panties in a towel and placed them at the bottom of the dirty laundry basket. As she wrapped the panties in the towel, she thought again of Austin, of his tough, athletic, lovemaking style. Returning to the bedroom, she found Derek already lying under the covers. She slid onto her side of the bed, extinguished the lamp on the bedside table, and moved closer to Derek. Making herself comfortable behind him, she wrapped her arms around his waist and snuggled against his back. Soon, they were both snoring quietly. The next day at work, Stell had a great day. Contracts for two houses were nearing completion, she had finalized a deal that brought her over $12,000 in net profit, and she had three showings that day. Life was good. Since she got her broker's license and went self-employed, her income had more than tripled, equaling Derek's income as an attorney. The closing went well, and the management company promised that the commission check would be deposited into her company's account by the end of the day. After a great lunch at her favorite downtown restaurant, Stell headed back to the office. She had a springy gait and a smile on her face as she walked through the front door. Glancing at her cute little receptionist in the reception area, Stell was surprised to see fear flash in the beautiful young woman's eyes. Before Stell could go to the counter to find out what was wrong, a man rose from a chair in the reception area and called out to her. Estelle Matheson? Stell turned around. It was highly unusual for someone to call her by her first name. Yes, can I help you? May I see some identification, please? For what? It's a question of legality and requirements. What legality? The man sighed. Ma'am, I have to confirm your identity before I can proceed with our case. 
Displeasure flashed across Stell's face, but she found her driver's license in her purse and showed it to the man. He compared it to the note card attached to the heavy manila envelope he held in his hands. Stell immediately realized he was serving process. It wasn't unusual for her real estate agency to have service rendered to her. Stell relaxed a little as the man handed her license back to her, along with a heavy paper envelope. Obtaining legal documents was commonplace in the real estate business. Miss Matheson, you've been served. Miss Matheson, you've been served. Thank you. I think one of our clients is dissatisfied with our service. The man looked at her with an almost apologetic look. Probably. He turned and hurried out. Stell glanced after him, then turned and headed for her office. Placing her purse on the bookshelf, she sat down and tossed the envelope on the desk. There were a few message errors to deal with, and she wanted to check her email first. One of tonight's shows had been cancelled, which was a disappointment to her. As she sorted through her email, she noticed a heavy paper envelope. Guessing what kind of lawsuit she was facing, she opened the envelope and pulled a stack of papers onto her desk. As the papers lay on the desk, the slight smile disappeared from her face. Her gaze stopped on the title of the first page, Dissolution of Marriage. Grabbing the stack of papers, she took a closer look and saw her name and Derek's. A sob escaped her throat as she set to work. What the hell, Derek had filed for divorce. Reading further, Stell suddenly discovered that the petition had been filed because of adultery. A shiver ran through her body. There was no way Derek could know that. She'd been too careful. He hadn't noticed anything. Tossing the stack of paper aside, she looked at the 8 by 10 inch stack of color photographs. She felt nauseous as she flipped through the pictures of her and Austin having sex in every conceivable form. The look of ecstasy on her face exacerbated the nausea. Turning away from the table, she spit the remains of her expensive lunch into the trash can. Grabbing a napkin, she wiped her mouth. As she turned back to the table, tears came to her eyes. My, Derek knows about Austin, I have to let him know. Stell dialed a number on the speed dial panel and waited for Austin to answer. She was surprised when a pleasant female voice informed the line that the number called was no longer in service. Austin's company's cell phone could not be disconnected. Finishing the call, she immediately looked through her contact list and found the number for the accounting firm where Austin worked. Dialing the number, she waited for the receptionist to answer. Higgins, Clark and Proper, Accounting Consultant. How may I help you? Austin Dickerson, please. I'm sorry. He doesn't work here anymore. Stell was stunned into silence. The voice in the phone continued. Can I forward your call to someone else? Stell's thoughts froze. She heard the receptionist ask the question again. Stell disconnected the call. Grabbing her purse, she folded the papers and photos back into the envelope and stuffed it inside. Running past the receptionist, she almost screamed. Crystal, cancel all my appointments. I'm not coming back today. Across town, Stell screeched to a halt in front of the mansion. Rushing to the door, she pressed the bell several times and, without waiting for an answer, pounded on the door, calling out several times. Austin, Austin, open the damn door. Finally, after pounding on the door and ringing the doorbell for ten minutes, the deadbolt opened and the door swung open. Austin stood inside, looking like death warmed over. His figure was drained and his face was calm and impassive. There was a kind of wistfulness in his eyes. Stella gasped when she saw him. What was the matter? Without moving or stepping aside to invite her in, Austin spoke slowly and without emotion. I was fired today as soon as I stepped over the threshold. Something about the behavior that brought the firm into disrepute. With no warning, no severance pay, and with the promise that I would receive no references. I'd have to move and start over. What? I don't understand. What did you do? Aya, I, uh, I guess I slept with the wrong married woman. 
According to Jeff Parsons, a senior partner who I now know plays golf with your husband almost every Saturday, having an affair with a married woman is in no way acceptable, especially if her husband is a crony of the boss. Stell slumped against the doorjamb. The nausea returned. She heard Austin's voice again and concentrated enough to hear it. Go away, Stell, don't come back. My life is a mess right now. The door slammed shut. Stell leaned against it and began to wail. Austin, don't send me away, please, I need you. Derek filed for divorce, I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't care, Stell, you can't stay here. Stell didn't hear anything else. Walking back to her car, she sat in the driver's seat in a daze and tried to plan her next steps. It took a conscious effort to start the car, with no definite direction, Stell touched off. When she finally realized where she was, she flinched. It turned out that her subconscious had led her home. Derek's car wasn't in its usual spot, so she pulled up, opened the garage door, and parked. When the door came down, the garage was dark. The house was quiet. Stell tossed her purse on the kitchen table and looked around miserably. Suddenly a thought struck her, and she rushed into the master bedroom. A wave of relief swept over her when she saw that Derek's suits and other clothes were hanging in the closet and his toiletries were in the bathroom. At least he hadn't moved out. More. Much later, Stell heard the front door lock click and the heavy sash swing open. She could see the door from where she sat in the kitchen. Derek set his briefcase down in the hallway and walked into the kitchen. Without saying a word, he walked over to the refrigerator, filled a glass with ice, and headed for the sideboard in the living room. Soon the glass was filled with single malt scotch whiskey. Taking a large sip, he turned to her and said nothing. Startled, Stell stood up. Derek. I can explain, this is nonsense. Derek listened, sipping his scotch. Walking slowly into the kitchen, he pointed to a small breakfast table that stood in a bay window extended toward the kitchen. He waited until she sat down. His voice was calm and steady. Stell recognized that voice, the one she had heard from him in the courtroom. Nothing? I suppose so. Compared to the year and a half you spent dating Vincent, or the two years you spent with Carrie, or the year you had fun with Peter, the last few months have probably been nothing. Stell's breath caught, and she felt like she'd been hit with a brick. He knew everything, not just about Austin. Seeing her reaction, Derek, like a true lawyer, continued. Was it anything more than a connection to Jackson when you decided to start your own agency? Stella's head started shaking from side to side in denial. She tried to speak, but only managed a muffled moan between sobs. Derek waited until some semblance of composure returned to her. You will pack your things and leave this house tonight. If you can't take everything you want, I'll have my lawyer see to it that you get the rest later. Stell, you broke my heart. You used to be a wonderful, attentive, loving wife. You turned into a greedy, conniving whore. I don't know you anymore. I don't want to be around you. I'm going away for a few hours, and when I get back, you won't be here. Derek, please. I have nowhere to go. Go to Austin's, or you've already been there. I'm not sure he'll take you in. He's not having the best day himself. The door closed, and Stell heard his car pull away. Sitting alone in the dark house, she realized that her whole world had just crumbled. Taking a deep breath, she went upstairs to change her clothes and pack everything she would need for the next few days. As she packed, her mind worked, rationalizing the situation trying to bring some order to the chaos that had descended. By the time she had packed two suitcases, toiletries, and a few souvenirs, she was no longer frustrated but frantic. Taking the luggage downstairs, she set it by the door to the garage. Turning toward the study, she took a glass, put ice in it, and poured whiskey into it. Returning to the kitchen table, she pulled an envelope out of her purse and began to read it carefully. By the time she finished, she was seething with anger. She expressed her emotions loudly to the empty house. What a son of a bitch. She looked over the divorce document again. She couldn't believe what she was reading. 
The asshole had set her up. It had taken years, but he was playing the long game. Everything he'd done for the last six years had a purpose. She remembered when she decided to start her own agency. He had been so caring and responsive. He offered to do all the legal work to set up the agency. She never knew that the LLC was owned by a trust and that he was the sole trustee. Everything she had been working on and building for the past six years was out of her control. Everything she thought they owned was actually owned by the legal partnership. The house, their cars, and even the retirement beach house were out of her reach. His pension was worth almost nothing. He was funding trust funds for his grandchildren out of mostly funds that were out of her reach. For the last two years, he'd been working in a partnership for pennies. Everything he earned, aside from his meager salary, was in the partnership trust awaiting distribution. She had several personal cash accounts and several personal credit cards. The divorce papers made it clear that his intention was to take everything from her and leave her as destitute as possible. Derek hadn't even been able to openly tell her about the situation. He just unexpectedly blew up the divorce proceedings. Her simmering anger turned into a red-hot hatred. Everyone she thought she could rely on had turned their backs on her. Austin didn't hesitate to shove her aside. Her beloved husband, Derek, had manipulated her and had been plotting against her for years to set this all up. The more scotch she drank and the longer she pondered the situation, the more furious she became. As she emptied the bottle of scotch, her rage became cold and calculating. She decided that if Derek wanted a war, she would settle it. Her life was over. He had taken away everything she held dear and everything she had worked so hard for. It only took Stella a few minutes to formulate her plan. If Derek could drop bombs, she would resort to nuclear weapons. She had nothing more to lose. With no marriage, no husband, no lover, no business, no future, she felt cornered. Her grim determination gave her strength, and she set about implementing her quickly devised plan. Two quick phone calls, and things got underway. After gathering everything she needed, she sat down at the kitchen table and waited. Derek arrived two hours later. He answered her call and was surprised that all she wanted to do was talk to him before leaving the house. After listening to her pleas over the phone, he realized he still had feelings for her, so he relented and agreed to meet. Upon entering the house, he was surprised to see that it was still dark and quiet. He could barely make out her profile sitting at the kitchen table. Her voice came to him, surprisingly gentle and ingratiating, with some slurring of the words. Come in, darling, sit down. I'm afraid I drank all the scotch. You'll have to find something else. It's all right, I'm fine. Then sit down. We'll be starting in just a minute. Nodding, he pulled up a chair and sat down. He saw the heavy paper envelope on the table and its contents. An empty whiskey bottle and a glass stood nearby. Stell seemed relaxed. They sat without speaking for almost ten minutes. Stell had been watching Derek intently the whole time. Derek looked around confused when the doorbell rang. Stell didn't get up but shouted, Come in, Austin. Derek was stunned when Stell's latest lover walked through the door. The look on his face when he saw Derek was comical. Stell brought him back to reality. Austin, come in and have a seat. Austin crossed the room in a daze and sat down at the table. Stell smiled softly. Good, we're here. It's lovely company. I just want you both to know that I appreciate finally finding out who you are. One of you is a whiny little predatory jerk, and the other is a sneaky, cowardly bastard. You can decide for yourselves which is which. Looks like I don't have any prospects. My business is no longer my concern. My lover is no longer my lover, and my husband has declared that he is no longer my husband. At this point, I am alone, in need of nothing, and have no feelings for any of you. Derek, I can't believe you put so much time and effort into setting this up. Why didn't you just talk to me when you found out about Jackson? We could have worked it out. It shouldn't have come to this. 
Still, there was and is no coming back from this. You know how I feel about loyalty. When you let Jackson fuck you in his office, that was it. It was over between us. I just had to protect myself. Derek didn't notice the way Stell's eyes lit up. Now you, Austin, I thought we had something. We did. We had amazing sex that cost me more than it should have. The smile on Stell's face should have given her away. Austin took it as agreement. Derek thought it signaled her determination to try to reconcile. Neither of them was ready when Stell took Derek's 9mm Sig Sauer from her lap and pointed it at Austin. There was no hesitation. There was a loud bark of a gun in the kitchen, and Austin toppled over onto his back. With a slight movement, Stell pointed the gun at Derek. Again, not a word was uttered. Derek reacted to the first shot and started to climb out of his chair. He barely had time to stand up when a 9mm hollow point bullet struck him squarely in the heart. Flying sideways, he stretched out on the floor and never moved again. Stell looked at the two bodies on the floor and the two suitcases by the door. She pondered her choice. She could sit patiently, call 911, and then endure a trial in jail time. She could take the 9mm pistol, stick it in her mouth, and join the two bodies. Or she could have taken the suitcases, the $100,000 that was in the safe, her passport, the gun, and gone to an unknown destination. She might have succeeded in escaping, or she might not have. Raising her glass, she finished the last drops of whiskey. She had a decision to make. 